Welcome everybody to the Red G Fox channel. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for liking and subscribing and being part of our community and putting some of the greatest comments I can ever think of because I'm always busting up laughing, reading the comments, reading the great quotes, and just sharing in the love of Sanford and Son. So before we get started, I want to say, as you see, there's King Kong and there's Godzilla. Me and my kids, big fans of them. We did go see the newest movie recently. If you are a fan of the other ones, those were a little more serious tone. This one still has some great monster fights and great monster characters, introductions to them. But overall, I went into it expecting it to be so-so, and I was pleasantly surprised. I would give it a 7 out of 10. The only thing I would say is, because I've seen some people love it and some people hate it, don't go into expecting it to be as serious. There is some campiness and goofiness with some of the human characters, but overall, my kids had a good time. We had fun, and if you like Godzilla and Kong, go see it. I would say it's worth a watch, but remember, keep in mind that it's not like Godzilla Minus Zero, a serious movie. It's there to have fun and a good time at the theater. So enough of that. I just had to say it because, you know, Fred Sanford loved Godzilla and he loved King Kong, so we had to talk about that. Today we are talking about our best of Season 2, the best episode tournament. We are in Round 2. We just got done with Week 1, Round 1. We knew who was going to win it, and that's Jealousy with Chris Osgood. I always call him Chris Osgood. With Osgood Wilcox, if you don't know, Chris Osgood was a uh, like a great goalie for the Detroit Red Wings back in the 90s. So his, when I hear Osgood, that always pops in my head being a giant hockey fan that I am. But yes, Osgood Wilcox, be of good cheer. He won uh, handily as well, as we expected. You know, I think um, Whiplash gave it a good uh, good run. But at the end, when you have one of the most memorable characters in show history, it's going to be hard to overcome that in round one. We'll see how they do in the future round when they play some of these other winners. But today, we have, man, we got the first ever with Julio. We got the first ever with Rollo. And we got the introduction to the card charts. Man, this is just like, wow. When I look at that and you look at some of the ratings on the IMBD, you're like, dang, these are. Season 2 is so much better. I always praise Season 3. I love personally uh, Season 5 and 4 pretty much, but 5 a lot. Um, 6 is probably the worst, but I still really enjoy 6 because I, you know, it's just, it's just, I like the goofiness of it. But Season 2, I think might actually be the best season but right behind 3. And it was the number two rated show in season two, so you see why. And when we cover some of the episodes we did today, a couple of them blow out last week's, other than probably Jealousy. So let's start with our first one, and that is the Puerto Ricans are coming. In that one, we know we got who, that's Julio's debut. Let's look at his debut right here. Come on there, Ron, senor, Mr. Sanford. Hey, I've been looking forward to this. It's a pleasure. I don't put my hand no bad hand in the the gold. Right. Yeah, sorry, he's such a nice guy. And and throughout the whole show and series, he is probably one of the greatest neighbors. And he is 100% one of the nicest characters in show history to put up with the crap Fred does. And then he finally turns and just goes, hey, Mr. Sanford, I know how you are. And he becomes really nice and, and takes all Fred's stuff. IMBD gives it a 7.9. Holy cow. I think that's higher than any episode, if not tied, for season four. That's how good this episode is. We'll see if he can even get out of this round. That's how crazy this round is. But with that, we know that Fred's new neighbor, he's a Puerto Rican. And the last thing, there goes the neighborhood. Remember Fred? He saw there goes the neighborhood when he finds out it's a Puerto Rican who's loud, playing his music, trying to clean the place up. What he actually does in this episode when he calls the city to report it. And the guy comes and gives him a citation for being so good. And then Fred thinks he's getting one. But yeah, it's got some funny moments. One of the ones I love is, that, remember, he blames them about Harlem. He's like, yeah, the Puerto Ricans came over there, and they brought the cockroaches with them, and they destroyed Harlem. And Lamont's like, it was a ghetto long before the Puerto Ricans got there. And Fred's all, but it was beautiful. And sadly, this is the last episode ever with one of my personal favorite characters, Melvin. And what does Melvin have to say about when Fred says uh, a ghetto's beautiful? Let's, let's hear what Melvin has to say. But beautiful. But beautiful. <laughs> How can a ghetto be beautiful? Yeah, Fred, how could a ghetto be beautiful? <laughs> I love it. How could a ghetto be beautiful, Fred? <laughs> shut up, Melvin. And then they both of them tell him to shut up, Melvin. And he leaves. He's like, if you don't want my opinion, I'll just shut up. And then he takes off. So sadly, last time we see Melvin. But the episode to still have Melvin in season two, which I even forget at times. And to see everything that Julio goes through. And he keeps going, hey, I'm bringing you a gift, the goat cheese. And he's all, put it back in your goat. And he's all... Maybe it's because I'm Puerto Rican. He's all, now nah, you got it, Fred. <laughs> Nothing to do with him. But Julio, his kindness prevails over Fred's stubbornness and prejudice towards Puerto Ricans. 
at the very end when he comes over and he brings him the food and he's like, yeah, hey, you know, it's uh, uh, sweet potatoes, uh, candy sweet potatoes, mustard greens, all Fred's favorite dish. And Fred's so excited. He's like, smell it, Lamont. And they're just loving it. And we got to see right there at the end when they become amigos because that's honestly, we've talked about Julio, why he's one of my favorite characters. But let's look at this. The one time that they really unite and become buddies. I mean, thank you for fixing my favorite kind of dish. Good. Bueno. Amigos? Amigos. Yay. Yeah. You know, I love that. He's all amigos, amigos. And they do a handshake. What a great scene. What a great setup to a new character. I really enjoyed that. So the, the Puerto Ricans is one of my probably in my top 20 of all time favorites because of how much I enjoy Julio, but also just the funniness and the great setup they do for Julio throughout the whole show history. And here it is competing with some other great ones. And let's get to the next one right here. Like I said, oh, in the, in the tournament, that is at 23% right now. So of all the votes, it's 23% and it is in second place. I don't know if it can overcome the number one team, the number one team, the number one uh, episode. Let's get to the second one that is in uh, third place with 11%. And that is the debut of Rollo. Re is that Rita Lawson's boy? Let's look at Rollo when we come right here. Hey, what's happening, Rollo? What's up, Cool Breeze? <laughs> hey, Pops. Don't call me Pops. <laughs> I love Rollo. I love Rollo too because he's kind of like Julio where he's like, hey man, it's in one ear and out the other. And Fred's like, because you ain't got nothing to slow it down. But in reality, Fred keeps coming with the jokes and most of the time Rollo takes it. I think one time he finally says, hey, Mr. Sanford, why, you know, all joking aside, why you always want to make me feel like a criminal? And Fred's like, because I want you to feel... Because <laughs> I want you to feel at home. Right? So even Rollo eventually does ask about it. But... In this one, IMBD gives it 7.5. I think that's a, a reasonable score. I might even put it 7.6, right? It is pretty good. Seeing how I like Puerto Ricans better, and that's a, a 7.9. This is pretty close right there. In this, we finally get to see one of Lamont's buddies, and it's Rollo. And they're going to go out for the night. And Fred's like, hey, man, you're going to leave me here alone? And other times he's mentioned that, right? But he ne actually, remember, like I said, it, when I actually did the episode breakdown, he goes... You know, there's been some break-ins recently. Once you hear that, you know someone's breaking in. Fred falls asleep, and th the guy sneaks in, and he's taking stuff out. And then you hear the truck pull up, and he flips off the light. As Rollo and Lamont come in, you hear a struggle. Fred gets up, and he's struggling. They turn on the lights. Uh, let's look at that clip. I got to see that. I love Fred choking him. And he's like, man, when you, he's a, uh, you know, grab the first criminal, <laughs> grab the first criminal he can see. And it happens to be Rollo. So the criminal takes off, he gets away, but they don't get any of this. He doesn't get any of the stuff. So they get their TV, they get all their stuff back. And then they find a gun that the criminal dropped and Rollo gets it. And I love the way he says, Jack, let's see him when he talks about the gun. Smith and Wesson fed in. Snub nose, blue steel, walnut grain handle. And it must be custom made because it's an ain't shooter, Jack. I don't know something about it. It just shows how cool Rollo is. Hey man, it's a snub nose. You know, it, it's, it's a, what I can't, I just forgot what he said. But anyways, he's excited. They're like, hey, let's pawn it. Let's sell it. And the Fred was like, no, let's turn it in. Let's turn to the police. And he's like, you'll be charged with every shooting sense Lincoln, Jack. <laughs> Such a, man, I love seeing Rollo in this. This episode's so good. And you're like, is it better? Forget the, throw the ratings out. As I watch it and as I talk about it, I think I like Julio so much. But when I actually go through this, you're like, man, this has some good lines with Rollo. Rollo gets some good lines off in here for an introduction, a new character. Because we saw Bubba, his first introduction, he barely had any screen time and really didn't have any jokes. So Rollo does get a couple good jokes off there. And he talks Fred into selling it. And Lamont's like, I can't do it. And the, Rollo's like, yo, man, I ain't, I ain't going to try to sell that gun. You know, he's like, because we know he'll probably get arrested <laughs> into some racket he's into. So they talk Fred into doing it. Then we see them go there and... He's waiting, and then I love how Rollo and Lamont are waiting right outside the door where you can see him. It looks like such a robbery. Everything about it paints, I'm going to rob your store, whatever. And the guy's nervous, right? He's like, okay, let's see what's going on. And Fred has the gun, and the way he presents it, he's like, how much money can I get? <laughs> Every time I see it, I'm like, dude, Fred, you got to admit, it looks like you're robbing the place. Let's look at a clip real quick. Hey, look, I got this gun, you see? I, I see it. And it's in pretty fair working condition. <laughs> <laughs> the way he does it, and the guy's like, oh, sure. You know, he's doing what he can to stall. And he, we see that he pushed the silent alarm. Then in comes Swanee, not Hoppy, Swanee and Smitty. And they're like, hey, hands up. And they all put their arms against the thing. And then they find out it's Fred and Lamont and Rollo. 
And they're like, hey, you know what? What are you doing? What is this? And Swanee's really like professional about it. He's like, what happened with this? Why are you trying to sell this gun? You should have handed the police and friends like, see, I told you dummies. Because if you think about it, they could have just called the cops and asked for Swanee and Smitty. Those guys always got Fred's back and Lamont's back. So they could have handed the gun in. Either way, they don't. And Fred's like, talks to the guy and he's like, I I'm doing episode breakdown. We don't need to do that. In the end, Fred ends up getting ripped off. The burglar came and stole stuff to get the money back for the gun. So they didn't get their stuff. They didn't get any money for the gun, so they, they go out empty handed. This is one of the episodes where I feel bad for them at the end. Nothing good came from this, other than we got to hear Rollo and a whole bunch of great jokes. Plus, you got Rollo, Smitty, Hoppy. It had a good group. You got the guys at the pawn shop. So it's a very memorable and entertaining episode. That's why I say it's probably a little higher than 7.5. But when it comes to our polls, and you don't blame people, it's sometimes who your opponents are. And I think if this episode went last week, I'm just basically putting them in chronological order. So that's the way it goes. You know, I'm not going to, whatever it is, it is. But you got to feel like I think Have Gun Would Sell might have did better last week. Remember, maybe even got second place over Whiplash. But here it's at 11% in third place. 11% There's no way it's winning. There's no way. We already got over 400 plus, if not more votes in a short amount of time, just in a day. So there's no way it's going to make a comeback, especially when Puerto Ricans at 23%. All right, I talked long enough about that. Let's get to the one that's probably going to win it. It is the one on my family channel when we did a voting poll like this like two years ago. This won season two, and that is the card charts. Yes, we get Hucklebuck, we get Skeeter, and we get Rooster. Let's check these guys out. Hey, man, how you doing? Yeah, man, what's going on? What's up Stuff in here, they got I love when they come in and you can hear Ron Glass, who's Uncle Buck, he's like, man, they got just as much uh, junk on the inside as outside. <laughs> Somebody comment below. Remember, someone else used that line. I can't remember. It was an episode we watched on our live show, and I remember we made a joke about it. It escapes my mind. But if you remember, comment below who else says that in a different San Francisco episode when they came in. And they're like, hey, there's as much junk as inside as outside. I can't remember who it was. But either way, they come three of the coolest cats in Sanford and Son history. Their outfits are awesome. We know, if you don't know, a fun fact, I've already said this about a dozen times on our show. It's taken from uh, Carvaggio's painting from like the 1500s called the Card Sharks, and they have similar hats and colors and wardrobes. This is more a 70s modern take on that. But Skeeter, we know Skeeter, he's dri uh, dealing under the deck. We got Hucklebuck and Rooster, and they're setting them on up. And Fred says before they play, look, they're setting you up. He says that while they're playing, he's saying, look, they're setting you up. And the fact that he recognizes, he tries all sorts of things. Lamont doesn't want to listen. We know he, he's stubborn. He's going, look, I know what I'm doing. I beat these guys last time. And and some of the best humor is when he's trying to stop them. The first is when he pours the drink. <laughs> he fills up uh, Skeeter's glass, who's the dealer, almost max. And he's like, they're giving him the looks. You can see right here, Ron Glass. And he's even starting laughing. They're like, we, he, and Lamont goes, he can't drink that, <laughs> which is true. Then he does the song where he's walking around going, uh, no one has as much as these, so throw them in, Joe. And he's singing it in Lamont's ear, and Lamont doesn't want to hear it. It's distracting him. Fred goes through so much. Let's look at one of my, uh, there's two of my favorites. Let's look at one of them right here. <laughs> when he's swinging, I mean, he hits them pretty hard. We're even like uh, Hucklebuck's reacting. Uh, Rooster's reacting. He's he misses at first, and then he starts actually getting him at the end. So that is such a great uh, moment, and um, it's it's so comical. It's a crack up. Everything up to this point has been funny. Then you get where Fred even goes. He disappears. He turns off the power, and Lamont has to come turn on the power. The best, my favorite, is when he goes. He disappears. He goes outside, and then Lamont gets a phone call, and then he tells him he's all, "Hey, Lamont, don't play that hand. Don't play that hand." And he's all, "It's a sucker's hand," and he hangs up on him. And then he sits down, he's ready to bet. And then he goes back again, the phone rings. Let's see what happens. Wait. <laughs> Dummy. <laughs> I love that. That's one of my favorite dummies. I probably have like a top five. I gotta make that video soon. But when he sits there and he answers it again, he's all, Dummy. <laughs> You're like, what did Fred do? Go to the neighbor's house to do that? So everything he does, and Lamont doesn't listen. And then, remember, he loses, and he's all flush. Yeah, he's all, just like you, your money just got flushed down the toilet. So he loses, Lamont's out, they're about to take off, they pulled their scam. Fred's like, no, 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 he's, I'm not going to do episode breakdown, you can go watch it, it's on there, you know, you can go find it on our channel under videos. 
Uh, it's one of my favorite ones to make. Oh, man. And I'm going to have the next like month, I'm going to be having so much fun making these episodes coming up, starting with Rated X. Uh, we'll get to that eventually. But anyways, back to this. So you can go watch this. But in that, at the end, Fred outsmarts him. You know? And another little clip that I love, I got to do this, is when he's pulling out his money to show them when they're like, you don't got money. He's got a big wad. One of my favorite parts. Let's look at that. Mint, government. <laughs> when he pulls it, he's off. Smells it, he's off. Mint, government. <laughs> so you can see, man, why this is a fan favorite. We'll get to the, the IMBD. Did I tell you? No, I didn't even tell you the IMBD. What am I doing? I always start with the, the rating. It's 8.2. It is the highest one. Oh, no, wait. Second highest one of season two. The highest being we just covered or talked about last week's episode was Rated X. So we'll see if Rated X, it, it lost to Rated X in my family channel two years ago. We'll see if it will win out or lose to Rated X this time on our Sanford and Son channel, Red G Fox. So yeah, Fred ends up outsmarting him at the end. He tricks him. And in the end, youth and experience, or not youth, age and experience overcomes youth. And that's why I love this. And Lamont, he's got Uncle Buck's hat. He's looking smooth. He's, getting, he's got all the wardrobe. So it is a great ending. And it is a comically classic. It is a top 10, if not probably top 12, right? I'm trying to remember if I had it in our top 10 channel. I think it was right on the border. It either made it. I think it did make it, but it's right there on the border. So it is so good. And comment below. It's at, what do you think for our poll right now? I mean, we got 23% for Puerto Ricans coming. That's a great one. We got 11% for Have Gun Will, Will Sell. 59%. That is one of the highest from any tournament from our best one and done, any of them. No, I can't remember, at very few, maybe Big Money Grip, his first round had like 60 when he was in. Very few when it comes to episodes or polls do we see this big of a landslide. And that's why I'm like, we can already say, card sharps, walk to the finals. You guys are gonna be in the finals. Uh, we'll see who they go up against. I like to do three or four at the end. Might even be top three, but man, they, we can expect the card sharps to be there. Uh, that's how good they're doing right now. So that is it with card sharps. Now, here we go. The last one, and you feel bad because in all of these, last week's it was um, blood is thicker than junk. And you know, they're almost like a sacrificial lamb. And that was a great episode. This is a really good episode. It has some funny moments. And that is tooth or consequences. In this one, we get uh, Fred comically going, I want a white dentist. <laughs> but man, does it ever blow up in his face on that? We'll cover that. But IMBD gives it a 7.4. Yeah, it's about that. You know, I we know it's not better than any of the three we talked about. Obviously, with the, the voting, the way it's going, you'll see what percentage they get. But IMBD 7.4, which we know is a really good episode. Anything, like I said, is 7 above is a really good episode. Probably 7.5 and higher is a great episode. So, tooth or consequences. We know Fred has a toothache. He's doing all sorts of things, including getting, uh, what is it called? Put in the comments if you put the word, I can never pronounce it right, ethnicity, ethnicity, uh, something, ficity bag, some weird title thing for the bag that Bubba brings him, and he wants to just tie it around his face and hook it there. And it's a rotten egg, a rotten uh, uh, eggshell, uh, all, everything rotten and stale. Is there an onion or garlic or banana peel? There's all sorts of garbage in there that is rotten and nasty, and you're supposed to put it, and it's supposed to relieve the pain. It's one of those old remedy medicines that we know do not work. It's probably all psychological. But Lamont see, smells it. He's like, oh, man, get that out of here. And Fred's trying to say, no, I'm going to do it. He does that. And Lam he doesn't listen. Lamont's like, hey, let's go to the dentist. He's like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. Then they get the hypno hypnotist who I love that he actually hypnotizes Lamont when he's standing there with the T-pose. When he's saying, lift your arm, lift your arm. And then they find out because they're like, Fred's not getting hypnotized. And that is so funny when he does that. And then Fred's like, remember he tells me, oh, you were hypnotized. The monster's like, no, I wasn't. Let's see what uh, Fred says right yes, here. Yes, right. You stand there with your arms spread out like that. All you needed was some tail feathers. He looked like a buzzard. <laughs> it's so true because he did look like he, he could have flown. Oh, my gosh. So, the, and then remember, he's like, okay, I'm done. And then the, the, he gets a shot. He gets a couple bucks and a shot because he's also an alcoholic, the hypnotist. So he's gone. And Fred's like, you know what? That's it. I'm cured. And then Lamont gives him water, cold water, and he, he tries to hide it. 
but he can't. He has to yell. So he finally breaks down as he's going to have to eventually with tooth pain, earache, toothache, two of the worst pains to have. You can't do it. You can give me a hurt arm, a hurt leg. I could sit down, try to relax. You give me ear or toothaches, I am done. And Fred is as well. So he finally goes to the dentist and he... The first dentist that comes is a black dentist, and he's well-educated. You can see the way he speaks. He knows what he's doing. He just wants to look. Fred's like, no, 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 no. And he's like, I see what's going on here. And in comes the white dentist, and Fred's like, now we got it. I bet his dad, your dad went to college. He's like, no, he didn't. He's like, you went to college. He's like, no, I went to a correspondent school, you know, corresponding school. And all these things that Fred thought the white guy had, and he's like, uh, black people don't do that. It, it's the complete opposite. Then he looks at his mouth. Let's look at it right here. That's Dr. Rogers to take over. He's the head of oral surgery. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I can't do it. He said, let me get our chief dentist. And in comes the same guy who, uh, I believe he was the, the guy who did Soul Train. The Soul Train, uh, the original, I thought he was. But anyways, that actor comes in and he's like, hello, Mr. Sanford. He's all, can you open your mouth wide to get your big foot out of it? <laughs> He does catch him on it, and Fred, I love it. Fred finally does it, just like he had this with Esther when she said, you're going to wish you had a block of ice where you're going when he, he's talking about going to hell. Fred just gives him her a sad look because he knows, hey, she might be right. And this is the same thing here. Fred says nothing. He shuts up when he knows he's supposed to shut up because he feels stupid because this dentist is the lead dentist. He's uh, the smartest one, probably went to college, and he's a black dentist. Everything Fred thought would be the opposite. So it's a great le lesson for Fred and all of us that you can't judge a book by a cover. So it's a very good episode. Here's the percentage, 8%. And I think, and I think that's about right. When you're going against card sharps, Hello, Hucklebuck, Rooster, you know, uh, Skeeter, that's all you got to say. When you're going against the debut of Rollo, man, they'll charge you with every shooting sense, Lincoln, Jack. <laughs> and also, you're going against Julio in the, his ver very uh, first episode, the debut of Julio, the Puerto Ricans are coming. You got no chance. You know, the only thing worse would have been is if the fourth episode was rated X or something like that. Or the first one with Esther. That's in here. You know, that's another one where they have the big party. So, man, it's going to shape up to a wild final. Just like the one and done characters where we said, hey, you know what, it's probably going to be big money grip. And in the end, it was. I don't feel that here. I don't. I think it could be card sharps. I think it could be the big party. I think it could be rated X. And it's a shame that you're like, hey, it could be uh, the Puerto Ricans, but that's going to be out. But there are so many good episodes in this that this is not going to be uh, predictable, like it kind of the one and done tournament where it was fun and we gave everyone their chance, but at the end we kind of felt like the final three and then uh, Sonny Cochran snuck in and kind of was the upset and made the final. Well, in this one, and uh, man, there are some big guns. So comment below any of these that are your favorite. Which one do you think has the best chance to go on and actually contend uh, with Jealousy, with uh, the big party, with Rated X, all the other classic episodes that we still have to cover that are in the high sevens when it comes to IMBD. I know because I've already done them all other than Rated X coming up next week. Be, su uh, be sure to tune into that. But man, this is so much fun doing these tournaments. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. Comment if you enjoy anything you saw today, like. And if you have not subscribed, because it shows me the, the people that watch, I think like 70% that watch my videos have not subscribed. If you're this far in the video, man, you better be subscribed because you saw something you liked and you're enjoying the channel. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your Friday. Be safe out there. And yeah, if you if you want to go see a movie, go see Godzilla. It was pretty good, Godzilla and Kong. Uh, it was a, you'll get a fun movie, but don't expect something too serious. Talk to you guys later. Peace.